I'm Keith Hall. I'm the makeup department head for Dexter. I've been the makeup department head since day one. This is my eighth and final season of Dexter. Um, my beginnings as a makeup artist are kind of, uh, I guess, humble or interesting to some people. Um, I was a musician for most of my life, but at the same time I was a, a, a painter and a sculptor as a child and a huge fan of horror and uh, sci-fi films. Uh, but my dream was always to be a rock star uh, as a young man because I was playing in rock and roll bands and, and sort of the art thing was something that I thought you could never really make a living at even though uh, I don't know why I thought I could make a living as a musician but um, that's kind of the path I was going and then um, uh, fell out of a couple of bands and, and while I was in college kind of drifting in college not, not really knowing what I wanted to do with my career I saw an ad in the paper that said becoming a Hollywood makeup artist uh, and it was that simple and sort of a light bulb went on in my head because I realized or I, I assumed based on that ad that you could actually be a Hollywood makeup artist and there's some sort of career behind that so I dropped out of college uh, enrolled in a makeup school here in Los Angeles and uh, went to makeup school for almost two years took every single course that you could take and all their uh, extra courses that they rarely offered just because I wanted to uh, have as much knowledge as I could get because I felt as though that would give me the best opportunity to not only work but work consistently and uh, and then from there uh, I started doing student features for uh, the different colleges here locally and weddings and anything else that I could do uh, as a makeup artist and uh, eventually uh, got on a low budget feature film and that led to another which led to another and eventually got offered a department heads job on a low budget feature uh, which led to more work and then sort of went up from there, uh, slowly gaining more ground in the industry and then worked for a number of years in the non-union world and eventually got my days and got into the union and started uh, once again at the bottom working my way up through the union ranks um, to where I am today and it's almost uh, 30 years later uh, here I sit uh, as the department head for Dexter. And um, so I don't come from a family of, from the film industry. Um, when I got out of makeup school, I didn't know anyone, had no connections whatsoever to the movie business, and sort of, uh, I'm kind of a self-made man in terms of uh, my career. In the eight years that I've, I've been on Dexter, I've gone through uh, three relationships. I'm trying to think if I went through a divorce or was a divorce by then, maybe even a divorce. Uh, I certainly feel a lot older. Uh, I think physically the show's taken its toll on me uh, just because of the demands and the hours we've worked and stuff like that. I think I'm a much better makeup artist than I was when I started this show and, um, and I'm a much uh, wiser department head uh, because it's, I feel like I've, I've gotten a career's worth of, of uh, stress and uh, multitasking in the eight seasons that we've been here on Dexter and it's, and it's challenging and it's challenged me in ways that I didn't even think I, I would be able to cope with and uh, so it's taught me a lot about myself and my ability to to solve problems and just uh, be resilient through uh, through stress and uh, and although I experienced that on every project I've ever done I think the fact that the, the show is so well made that it just pushes you to do your best work all the time every day regardless of how you feel physically or what's going on around you and uh, so that's definitely changed me. Like I said, at the end of the day, I think I'm a, I'm a better person and a better makeup artist having had this experience. Over the last eight years, I've learned uh, that, uh, you know, you can do multiple things simultaneously, um, which, although I, I knew that, it was never put to the test quite like it has been here on Dexter, where we're cranking out. Uh, prosthetics while we're uh, sitting on set for 15 hours a day and and uh, sculpting and building and molding and running foam and and silicone and all that while we're uh, you know handling you know the, the looks for 10 people um, so I, I've learned that you can multitask in ways that I never thought I could and 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 work at a really high level when you think you can't under certain conditions and uh, it's sort of elevated my game because of that, as much as I've done that kind of stuff in the past on features and other television projects, nothing has been quite like this. It's also because my main actor, who I'm 
responsible for is in almost every scene of this show, and uh, and so uh, the time that I have to spend on set is such that um, it would seem on paper impossible for me to be able to get all this other stuff done, but uh, between myself and my team, we're able to pull it off consistently, and so um, I've learned a lot about myself that way and, and, and what I can actually accomplish uh, through, through the eight seasons of Dexter. I think that the biggest inspiration that I have is uh, Michael C. Hall himself. I think that the commitment that he brings to his character and, uh, and to the show and uh, the integrity that, that he has as an artist has always inspired me and to, to, to bring my A game every day to work. And then I'm also I'm inspired by my co-workers, you know, my team of people here in the trailer, um, they come to work every single day willing to give 100% uh, in spite of whatever's going on. Uh, and so uh, that inspires me every day. And then the feedback I get from fans and, and supporters of the show um, is another huge inspiration for me as, as a, a makeup artist in the department, and specifically for Dexter, is everywhere I go, uh, people want to relate their stories about how uh, Dexter is uh, such a huge part of their life and, and, and what it means to be a fan of this particular show and also a fan of the makeup on the show. And so that's also a huge inspiration for me. The, the, the people that influence me the most and, and, and whatever good there is in me, I can uh, attribute to these two people, and that's my grandparents. And they were both extremely selfless human beings who sort of lived to help others. You know, and uh, and it was I've never really m met too many people like that in my life, and so when I got in a position as a makeup artist to try to then give back and help others, um, I th I sort of made it a quest to do that because it made me feel good to help other people, and it and it really I learned that I got more from it than even the satisfaction I got from doing a really cool makeup, and so. Uh, with Dexter, because we've gone so many seasons, I've been able to help support so many makeup artists over the years and actually launch the careers of some people that, and help people, uh, you know, relaunch their careers. Um, and I think that I'm probably more proud of that than even the best makeups I've done on Dexter. And I can say that about my career in general. The people that I've helped over my career to become makeup artists or to get into the union or to become hairdressers. Um, I'm more proud of that than any of movie I've ever done or whatever because that's actually really impacted people's lives in a positive way and sometimes even changed people's lives and helped them um, realize some of their dreams and goals and, and for me as one person to be a part of any of that um, you know it's huge and it, to me it's much more profound and important than anything that I could do uh, in terms of makeup artistry. But, and that's another reason why the television programs I watch, and the entertainment I'm interested in, usually revolves around things like that, like the, you know, shows like uh, Restaurant Impossible and the Bar Rescue and all this stuff I tend to watch are shows where they take, you know, people with broken businesses and broken lives and sort of uh, deconstruct and rebuild them into a more positive future. And so, you know, those are things that, that uh, inspire me as a human being and things that I'm most interested in and when I'm trying to sit down and be entertained, I, I tend to, you know, lean more towards things like that that just, at the end of the day, make me feel good about not only myself, but about my fellow man in general. In the immediate future, I'm going to uh, take a vacation and, uh, interestingly enough, go to Miami and lay on the beach for a while and then, um, and then look for my next challenge. I understand that a show like Dexter comes along if you're lucky once in a career, so I'm not expecting to get on another show of the caliber of Dexter um, with the challenges that Dexter has uh, presented itself to me by. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, there'll be another show and another set of challenges and, and another uh, chapter in the book of my career, and so I'm really looking forward to the future, although I don't have anything specifically lined up. It's funny, uh, jobs for me just seem to fall out of the sky. I never really know where my next job is going to come from. I just try to do as good a job as I can on every gig and let that sort of be my calling card. And so uh, uh, for whatever reason, I've been able to make a career out of it for the past 30 years. So uh, although I don't know where my next job is coming from, I'm sure it'll be fun and interesting and challenging 
uh, in a different way than Dexter was. That is, as much as things change, uh, certain things stay the same. And although yeah. technologically uh, makeup has, has changed a lot in the past eight years, I mean, there's been all these advances in products and Sorry. and uh, materials uh, through chemistry, and um, so that now so many of the products that you use, especially with regard to special makeup effects, are almost like turnkey things where. Um, you don't have to literally uh, make and create the products anymore. You can just literally buy them and apply them onto people, it, it, whether it's a prosthetic or, or uh, palettes and things like that. They've, they've advanced to the point to where it kind of, uh, it's like that, that commercial, you know, uh, a caveman could do it. And that's, that's kind of how it's, it's simplified things for makeup artists, you know. But at the same time, because of that, uh, it doesn't challenge makeup artists as much to sort of get in there and sort of be their own chemists and create from scratch. But what's interesting about this show is that the demands are such with the time constraints and things like that and the budgets to where oftentimes I've had to go back to sort of my mad scientist days and, and sort of create things from scratch and use old techniques that worked on low budget features years ago and stuff like that and kind of combine them with all this new technology to realize all the effects and the the makeup stuff that we do on this show. So, like I said, as much as things have changed and 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 uh, become easier for us, um, you still having a fundamental sort of grounding in uh, in basic chemistry and how makeup is made and how it works and how things can cross from one thing to another to be used in different ways is really important for makeup artists because you can't always rely on like the latest technologies to sort of save you from situations. And uh, Dexter's a good example of that, where even with everything that we've had at hand, with all this new products and stuff, a lot of times I've had to go back to things that I did 20 years ago to make it work within, like I said, the budgets and the time constraints that we have here on Dexter, and, and still be able to, live, to deliver uh, makeup effects that are at the same level uh, consistently as they would be if it were doing a feature film. Well, if I had to give advice to a young makeup artists, I would say, First and foremost, work on your craft. You know, uh, take the time to not only have a working knowledge of what it is that you're trying to do, but uh, practice it till you get good at it. You know, and especially the stuff you don't like. You know, uh, I practice the, the the types of makeups that I liked the least, the most, so that at least I could get good at that and be more well-rounded. And the next thing I would uh, I would advise young makeup artists to to do is to have kind of a game plan in their career and what, where they see themselves five years from now, 30 years from now, whatever, because you kind of have to, to play the long game because you know makeup artistry is one of those things where it takes a long time to establish yourself and to build a career and, um, and you have to be prepared for that. And, uh, and, and the other thing I would say is give back. You know, uh, When you become successful, if you're lucky enough to become successful, give back to people, lift people up, uh, inspire people, and try to help people and uh, and I think you'll find that your career is a lot more enjoyable when you do that rather than just make it about yourself and about just makeup or just the next job or the next big job or things like that because at the end of the day what's funny about this industry is once you sort of become successful what you realize is it's not that much different it's basically you get better caterers and you get a little bit bigger paycheck but the makeup's still the makeup you know, and if you're a good person and you want to help people when you're coming up, you'll still be that way when you're successful. You just have more opportunity to do that. And so uh, I think that you should try to uh, be an inspiration to people. I think that's, you should do that in any, any uh, thing, any endeavor in life, but, uh, but certainly in our industry because so many people look up to us and so many people uh, are enamored by what we do. So we have all these people waiting to hear from us and learn from us. And I think it's incumbent upon all make makeup artists when they become successful to try to give back and inspire others. Discretion's a big part of it. You've got to keep those secrets because that's why they trust us. Otherwise, nobody would ever want to sit in our chair in the first place. Because it's a weird thing. You, it, it, the only thing I can compare it to would be like being a doctor or a psychiatrist because we really are physically intimate with these folks in ways that nobody else in their lives usually are. For long, long periods of time sometimes, and they have to have their complete and total trust and faith in us, not only to make them look good, but to be able to keep their secrets when they need to just unload, because they need to do that so they can go out and play these characters. And so, it's something again that you never learn in makeup school. They would never, they don't teach that. You know, it's like and you have to learn how to deal with all that. 
take that home with you and not, a lot of times, not let it get to you, you know, because you hear some things, sometimes you're just like, wow, I thought I had problems. <laughs>